Paneloids Podcast. Paneloids Podcast. Kyle here with Pierre. We're talking about a bunch of stuff. We're going to talk about Secret Invasion. I'm going to spoil my adventures with Superman. And then we're going to do our new segment, Pull or Pass. Now, when you say you're going to spoil it, is it because you're spoiling it to me or you're spoiling it to the audience? To you, because I know you didn't watch it. The first episode? Then I'm going to spoil the second one. Oh. Let's start with some news. Let's take turns. Okay. Are you saying let's take turns? We should take turns? Yeah. Like you read the first one. I read the next one. I thought that might be the first news thing. Like, it's like, oh, let's take oh, turns. Gonna... It's a new anime coming out. Let's oh. take turns. <laughs> no, I just want you to read some of it. Animes always have like a weird name like that. You know, it's like. I fell in love in a dungeon with a girl because there was a big slime looking at me. All right. News. Mary Jane Watson will officially take up the mantle of Jackpot in Amazing Spider-Man number 31. Explain it. What are we talking about here? You think I actually know? I have no idea. I have not been reading any of that. She's got some kind of something on her and it has a jackpot power, which is, you know, funny because like that's her famous dialogue. You hit the jackpot. So now her superhero name is jackpot. You know, I've seen a couple TikToks now of people mm -hmm. believing that they are purposely destroying the Spider-Man comic books, like all of them all at once. They're just destroying all of them and just letting Miles Morales become the forefront of the Spider-Man universe. I don't know if it's necessary purposely, but they're all apparently really bad at the same time and miles morales is the only book worth picking up there's a writer of spider-man we asked him two questions in new york comic-con and every few days someone comments on that little interview video telling him to do horrible things it just doesn't stop i just keep deleting them because he's a cool dude but they're out for this man and my tiktok many views because of the hate mail I appreciate, you know, you trying to defend people and delete these comments, but like, mm. honestly, it might be good to keep those comments just because, <laughs> you know, just for the views, bad publicity is good publicity. That is true. Um, I'm all for this conspiracy theory, though. Like I am for taking down Peter Parker. So that's the thing. I, it's not too far fetched because I feel like they really do want to make Miles Morales like the face of it, because what more can you do with Peter Parker? Do you see Spider-Boy as fangs now? No, I'm not following that. I didn't even pick up the first one. Why does he have fangs? I get it. Okay, Spider. But like, no. Next in the news, Jennifer Gardner. She's back as Elektra in Deadpool 3. I'm sure it's going to be a quick thing. I doubt it's going to be anything longer than just a quick cameo. I think based off of some of the leaks and what they're doing, I think he's killing the Fox universe. Now, there was another rumor that just came out. I'm starting to feel like this is just like when Multiverse of Madness was coming out. Do you remember all the rumors? Like there was like supposed to be so many cameos that were yeah. dropping in that. Yeah. And it ended up being like, two maybe three i feel like it's starting to become that so the latest rumor is that hulk is gonna fight wolverine in this so there's gonna be like an alternate universe hulk chases him down what everyone's speculating is that the fight scene where you see deadpool and wolverine that mm -hmm. it is in the same place that loki was basement of the Marvel Universe, yeah. as they call it. I, I forgot what call the name it. of it yeah. was. Wherever the smoke monster was, you guys yeah. fill in the blanks, all right? Yeah, so apparently that's where the fight's going down. So you're going to see multiple versions of themselves in that. And that's why Mobius is involved. And that's why people are, I guess, speculating. And I think it's just because the famous fight scene between Hulk and Wolverine. Well, also, but... can we speculate that this is Hugh Jackman's last appearance as Wolverine? Because he said the other was his last. Can we assume this is his actual last? I think so. Like, it might even be quick. Mm -hmm. Like, it might just be he's an alternate version of the Wolverine that we're actually going to get. Right. So I think we are going to get a bunch of appearances, honestly, in this one. And I think it's all just going to be a bunch of variants, throwaways, and just moving on. I really hope that it's not that, where he's in one scene, gets crushed by, like, the Fox logo. My guess is that this is the universe that Wanda took out the Illuminati. Because his costume would be in lines with Xavier's floating yellow. Very strong possibility because the yellow chair, yellow suit, it's classic. The only thing I will say is it the exact Wolverine, I guess, that we're going to get. I guess the yellow costume because the sleeves are throwing me off. So the sleeves are not for no reason. The rumor is that Hugh Jackman's had mm. skin cancer specifically. So... The sleeves are just so he's not in the sunlight when they're filming all of this. Like, they literally just modified the costume for him. They might edit it out. I think all of these leaks are honestly on purpose anyway. Yeah. Like, definitely. they were about to drop, and what did they do? Ryan Reynolds posted a clear picture before they dropped. 
So we got the yeah. suit and now we're just seeing him in the suit doing some different moves. I think it was on purpose. They knew it was going to happen. So they said, let's get ahead of it. Let's post a nice clear one. Let them post the blurry ones and speculate from there. But I think we'll get a mask. I think it'll be short lived. I think you're right. He's going to go to some universe, whether it's the basement, whether it's just the universe that this Wolverine exists. I don't think this is the same Wolverine from Logan. I think this could just be its own. But if it is the same from Logan, maybe there was a point in time where he wore the yellow suit that they didn't mention. Only time can tell. I really don't want any more leaks from it, to be honest. I really don't want. This was enough to know, like, okay, we're getting everything we wanted. Whatever it is now, we just kind of have to take it and trust them. Because, I mean, we thought he was done. And now we're getting him in a classic suit next to dead. We got to just take it and be happy. And it wasn't just Jennifer Gardner. It was funny that she's confirmed, but Ben Affleck was rumored. Another rumor. So apparently they're hunting Wanda down. Because of what she did to that universe. Which works, honestly. Deadpool just gets hired to hunt her down because of all the shit that happened because of her. The TVA hires him like they need someone that's just like expendable, like a mercenary kind of type. Make it work. DC News. Superman Legacy finds a lot of people. I saw that. Yeah. So we already know our Clark Kent. We already know our Lois Lane. Old news. Everyone knows it. New news. Hawkgirl has been cast. Isabella Merced. I don't know where she's from. But just based off of her face, I feel like she will do good. That's all I got. We'll look up all of her films and see what her Instagram is like. Next up, Mr. Terrific, Eddie Gathagay. I think I said it right. I might have said it completely wrong. You would know him from X-Men First Class, but he was Darwin. I actually really like that casting. I didn't really even know he was still acting. But maybe he is, and that's awesome. So good for him. And like for me, this is probably one of the coolest things was to see Nathan Fillion be cast as Guy Gardner. We knew he was going to show up, right? Oh, yeah. How can I say this? Once again, a ginger is not cast as the ginger. <laughs> now, when it's someone who looks completely different, am I happy about this? Yes. But don't just give me some other white dude who just doesn't have red hair. I'm offended. It hurts. He was rumored to be Wonder Man at one point. But I think mm -hmm. it took too long for them to get to that point. But Guy Gardner, as much as he's not a redhead, imagining him with that red hair actually works. Dye it, wig it, red hair. He has to have the red hair. Mushroom cut or no? Because he gets like okay. a faux hawk at one point. Yeah, yeah. I feel like James Gunn is going to give him the bowl cut, in my opinion. I think he's going to get the bowl cut. Do I want him to get the bowl cut? No, because he won't be taking it seriously. But I feel like he's going to start out with the bowl cut. Okay. They have to at least touch on it a little bit. Maybe even make fun of him for having a bowl cut in the past. Oh, like a flashback to like when he first got the ring and he looks like a doofus. Like they're like talking shit to him and they're like, yeah, remember your bowl cut? I mean, he's supposed to be a little bit of a prick character too. Like I don't mind the casting. He looks and fits the part, but part of me is like, is he going to be the full annoying asshole that he needs to be, you know? But then again, there's so many people in this movie, so it might just be a quick introduction. Like that's a lot of heroes in a Superman movie. Basically from what they were saying was that DC doesn't feel like they need to do like an origin story at all. So they're like, you know, these characters already just take them, which I'm not mad at. I feel like it's true. Like, I really don't need to see Clark Kent starting again. Just get to the point. One more Superman casting. Anthony Cargan is going to be Metamorpho. And this is also noted to be in Superman. It's just cool because this guy's been in Gotham and something else. He's been in a few things superhero related. Okay. So yes, Metamorpho also in Superman Legacy. My adventure with Superman. So I only watched episode one. You watched episode two. But episode one, I will say, left me wanting more. Really, really strong entrance to Superman. I'll say episode two is better. Okay. By far. I watched one. I was like, I hope two is a little better. Like, I liked it and I could see it's going to be a good show. But I was hoping two would be more exciting, per se. And it definitely was. I won't spoil it completely for you, but... He not only fights robots, destroys robots, blushes a whole bunch of times at Lois Lane. He gets his suit in the most Sailor Moon anime-esque fashion. He like puts his arms out and he like just magically gets laced up. So definitely a good episode. I saw online somewhere where they said the S is for Shonen, which I thought was mm. really clever because, yeah, they kind of in a weird way made an anime. It has a bit of an anime feel. Yeah, I'm glad that you brought that up because I really like the art style. To your point, yeah, it's that anime style, like him blushing. I guess the electric sparks when he first figured out his powers. Like that first five minutes of the episode where mm -hmm. they just introduced his powers, that was a very cool way. And then just move on to him meeting Lois Lane, which I am a big fan of this Lois Lane. 
Yeah, I thought she's always been a cool character, and I think they're doing her justice for sure. Like, they aren't changing her demeanor, how she is, but I think it just balances the show very well and where they're putting Superman at. I would say it's my top version of her thus far. And the show gives me hope for just Superman in general. Could we compare it to My Hero Academia? Mm -hmm. He's almost Deku in this, kind of like the innocent, clumsy, but super powerful and Mm -hmm. when he has to get serious he gets serious is this show part of like the new dc connected to the dcu well okay so maybe it's not connected but gun did say he wanted pretty uniform i guess not storyline but general idea of what was happening in the normal universe it's not canon i guess is the right way to say it my opinion it's not going to be canon I want this Superman. Yeah, I agree. I do think the Superman actor we're about to get, whatever the hell this man's name is. I hate that people are calling him Henry Cavill Wish. He's a hundred times better. I'm getting canceled for that one. Yeah, no, you can't do that. The Snyder fans will cut you. But yeah, I think we're going to get a similar personality. Less cartoonish, no blushing, a little more serious. But I think we're going to get in the realm of innocent wanting to help people, you know, Boy Scout, which is what Superman is. But the way this cartoon is, it seems more relatable than all the supermans we got before is that the right way to say it yeah this is a sick show and i think this is right along with velma that got (laughs) renewed for a second season velma did my adventure with superman also got renewed just after two episodes i believe that and yeah everything else i want to talk about is straight spoiler i don't know if you want me to do this do the fans want it I mean, the fans have already watched it by the time this episode comes out. No, I've been told that a week and a half is the right time to drop spoilers, Kyle. Been getting yelled at a lot. That might be the guy that gave us a bad review, for the record. Our one star on every single platform. He might be pissed that we spoiled it. Spoilers for the fourth episode of Secret Invasion. My big question. Why has no one killed Nick Fury? How many times is he just standing there in the middle of gunfire and everyone's just like, I'm going to walk away now. Just gives him a dirty look and leaves. Like, shoot someone else, make some watch, and then leave. I understand that they're fucking with him. Like, I understand that they see him as the villain. He didn't help the scrolls the way he said he was going to, right? But I'm sorry, he's continuously trying to cause problems for them, and they're just allowing it just so they could give him that dirty look and be like, ha, I got another one of your friends. Like, they allowed him to free the president all because they wanted to give him a dirty look and walk away. Like, tell me I'm wrong. Because when Fury showed up, they were like, oh, damn it, Fury's here. And then it was like, Fury got the president. We'll get him next time, though, and that'll really piss him off. This episode was better, though. I'll say that. Yeah, I mean, they had action, had something more happening than them just having a bunch of dialogue. Spoilers. We found out that his daughter's alive. Queen of Dragons, Khaleesi. Queen of Dragons. Khaleesi's alive, which... I kind of figured. I was like, there's no way they're just going to like bring her in and kill her off. Yeah. And I guess she's a super scroll, as we found out. So she tested on herself, and now she's a super scroll. And we also found out that time machine that I thought was a time machine is not a time machine, which makes a lot more sense. But I think my idea, honestly, was better. Your idea was way better. Yeah. For everyone that didn't hear my idea, I'm going to tell you, before the show aired, that was a time machine, not a super scroll maker. So I thought that his his idea was, I'm going to go to the past and I'm going to get the powers from the superheroes in the past, quote unquote, the Fantastic Four, come back and unleash hell that way. And that would be our kind of like small introduction to the Fantastic Four. But like obviously still centralized around Secret Invasion. But yeah, they didn't do that. Then they gave us a lot of dialogue. That's what we've gotten so far. And tentacles made of wood that squeeze. I'm starting to think Maria Hill isn't dead also. If she isn't dead, was it all a farce? Was it she's a scroll? Yeah. No, I'm starting to think there's more to it. So Nick Fury says no one calls him Nick. So mm-hmm. it's making me really want to go back and watch every movie and see whoever has called him Nick before no. in the past. Right. Because I feel like those people are the scrolls, at least. And Maria Hill calls him Nick a few times and then gets shot. Like, we saw her body on the ground, but maybe she didn't turn to a scroll yet. They also, at one point, Black Widow had that weird web that she could put on her face that changed. It was like a mask. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there's a bunch of shit. That could have happened. My only rebuttal to you going back and watching everything is, spoiler, but Rhodey is a scroll. Yeah. And he clearly called Fury multiple times and didn't seem to slip up. Well, he called him Nick during their meeting. Before he said, before Nick goes, no one calls me Nick, the episode before that, he was called Nick by Rhodey. And that's how he knew that Rhodey was a scroll. 
Okay. So he knew already that situation was happening. He even said it later on, like another episode. He's like, I have intelligence of someone higher up, like close to the White House. Like, so he already knew like who was involved. And then he got him with those nanobots. Everyone's trying to say Nick Fury's out of it. I don't think he's out of it. He's like playing a part. Through nanobots in a drink, fed it to a scroll. And they saved the president. It really does bother me, though, that the scrolls can't tell who a scroll is. Like, they are just as bewildered by the shape-shifting as a human would be. <laughs> they have no clue. How would that work in society if, like, everyone could just constantly, like, be your neighbor and tell you to fuck yourself? It doesn't make sense. The species should at least know within the species who's shape-shifting. It's very bothersome. But yeah, spoiler. Talos is dead. He's coming back. I don't think that one's false. I'm pretty sure he's dead. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he's dead. But he was in pretty bad condition before that. So, like, did he really, like, kill him? Or did he, like, I guess do him a favor? I was thinking that maybe this would spin Talos' daughter into a villain arc for real. And then she would become the real villain. The real Super Scroll. And get, like, all the powers. And kill both sides. Just go ballistic and take out everyone. That was my one little theory with her. Because she finally has this moment with the father. And I just feel like there's got to be a bigger twist than Rhodey being a scroll. There's got to be a bigger twist than Nick Fury's wife being a double agent but falling in love with him anyway. Yeah, they definitely need a bigger twist. Because it's been pretty lackluster. This episode was the best so far. And I hate to be like, oh, because the action. Because it's kind of corny. But... Yeah, because the action, like it made it like we saw some power. But Rhodey is like one of the best characters. Like, I really can't wait for Armor Wars. He is great. Like, he is the most entertaining character in the show. Like, just more of him. Yeah. Even it's not even him. It's a scroll on top of it. A girl scroll. A lady. Rumors, baby. It's my favorite segment. That's right. We're doing rumors and we're doing leaks. Robert Downey Jr. was reportedly spotted. Oh, God, we're spoiling again. Oh, you don't have to listen to this if you don't want. Don't listen to this part. Rumors, there's a disclaimer. A lot of shit in this, and you don't want to hear it. Robert Downey Jr. was reportedly spotted in Tony Stark's look driving his supercars in the sets of Captain America Brave New World. I don't believe it. It's probably Moving a flashback. On. Flashback. Maybe he's back as AI. Apparently he has a bald head now. Whatever. Anson Mount returns as Black Bolt. That already happened. What are we talking about here? No, like in talks to like have a big role return. Okay, well, he's not really in talks because otherwise you kill everyone. Black Bolt, baby! All right, <laughs> Love it. We're moving on. Close this episode out with the newest segment of Panloid's podcast. A new fan favorite. Got a lot of positive reviews for this. And we're going to keep it up. Pull or pass? Pierre physically wrote down notes to share with me. So how many books did you read, Pierre? Three. I only read one. All right. I meant to read more. To defend myself, some of my reading was for upcoming interviews, which I will not name yet, but they are big and they're exciting and they're full of chains. All right. <laughs> so I read Planet of the Apes number one, came out in April. I read it now because the Marvel app hasn't been upgraded. So I get things a little late. <laughs> it is a direct connection to the James Franco Planet of the Apes movie, which... As I've said, I'm a very big Planet of the Apes fan. Not as big of a fan as the newer universe where they try to make things make sense. I like the original where people just wanted pets, you know, like they just wanted pets. And when dogs and cats were eliminated from the earth from a weird virus, monkeys became pets and time travel led to the monkeys getting too smart and overthrowing their owners. I like that. Like, I like that polluted time travel where it's like the chicken or the egg. What came first? The smart one from the future. It's confusing. It doesn't make sense. But that's where this comic is going with. It's taking the virus one step further. It's basically showing just a continuation of the movies. So, like, there's little wars going on. Like, people are dying out from this virus. And people hate chimpanzees because they think they're responsible, even though that's where the cure remains. Now, who's publishing Planet of the Apes now? It's technically Marvel. Okay. But it's under a Fox logo. Okay. If that makes sense. But it is Marvel. Walker's writing it. I read his Cyborg years ago and a few other things. He's good. Good fit for this. I think I'll keep reading it. Again, I just wish it wasn't anything to do with those movies. I just want to see, like, the future. You know, like, the Statue of Liberty is, like, half in the desert. You only see a little bit poking out. That's what I really would like to see more comics about. But I'm cool with this. Just hope it progresses enough and continues enough to get to a future where it's actually a planet of the apes not just an explanation of how we got there so it's a pull so that's probably going to be a pass for me i'm sure it's good so i'm glad you're enjoying it good for you buddy thank you appreciate it so that's your one book yep that's all i got i think you may have read ultimate invasion no i didn't how it got spoiled for me by like 10 different videos and jeremiah so i just didn't read it 
we talked about it. I let Jeremiah spoil it for me. It's written by Jonathan Hickman, art by Brian Hitch. And fucking awesome. It's back, specifically the maker. He is back with a vengeance. He has created his own universe. He's stopping Spider-Man from becoming Spider-Man, Peter Parker. He contained the spider, put a little jar, and I don't know what the fuck he's going to do with that. But I'm in. I'm ready for the next one. I want to see where this goes. So I'm very excited by that. So cool way to bring us back in. I bought two of those. I bought the Miles Morales cover, mostly because that's the only one that was available at the shop. And I wanted to read it. It was a shiny one. But I bought the blank cover so we can get that signed and drawn on by someone. When you say we, you mean put it in my possession, make me do all the figuring out, Mm -hmm. footwork, all of that, and then just asking you for money once it's all done. Bingo, bango. That's going to be a pull on my list. A uh, funny question to think about with this. Ask Crasher on TikTok, a mutual of mine. He okay. said, did the maker actually recreate the Ultimate Universe? Is it the original Ultimate Universe or is it just a new universe? What is it? So the way I'm reading it, is that he's creating his own new universe the way he wants it. So whatever he wanted to do, maybe someone would read it differently from me, but that's how I read it. So, and I don't know why you'd start with Peter Parker being the central point, but I guess that's what brings me in being that I'm a big Spider-Man fan to Mm. see that. And I think you of all people should be like, let's go. Like Peter Parker is not Spider-Man. And then Miles Morales stayed behind, which was weird. He gave him a blank card. He's like, oh, well, hit me up if you change your mind. And then he went to the new universe. So maybe the card itself is a portal or something. It looked like a business card and it was blank. So no idea. Moving on. My second book that I read. Now I read one and two. So two just came out today. But Loki by Dan Waters, art by German Peralta. Sick. The first one pulled me in. It was very well written. First, it was a little slow, but then it, you just dive right in. So basically, two frost giants steal a ship that he made out of fingernails. And it's a bunch of fingernails from like forgotten wretched souls. That's just what he could get his hands on. He couldn't get his hands on any other fingernails because everyone was stopping him in Asgard. Like they knew what he was up to. They didn't want like Loki doing that. It sounds crazy Mm -hmm. uh, because it is. So this is when Loki was like super fucking evil and he wanted to like really destroy everything. But that was in the past. And now we take you to current Loki where Thor is talking to him and Loki is in Florida just hanging out. And Thor is just like, what are you doing out here? And he's like, I'm just enjoying Florida. I guess my overwhelming question is, was there a point? Like, Is it going somewhere? Is it just like, come here for the ride? He is supposed to be in charge of all the frost giants now. Okay. Thor's like, why are you in Florida? Why aren't you taking care of the Frost Giants? He's like, I'm teaching them how to read. So he left them with books. And he's like, you guys have to learn how to read. Trying to cause wars. They learned how to read. And they learned about his ship that he made years ago. They steal the ship. And they crash it right into the world tree. Oh, They crash it right into it. (laughs) And immediately cause shit. So pieces of his ship, three pieces, get launched across the universe. And now he's going around trying to find those pieces the first piece that he found landed in that planet where the dwarves are that's where i think you like the second book it's all about the dwarves and they find one of the pieces of the ship that morphs into a weapon all shit breaks loose and loki stops it and he's moving on to the second piece but it seems like the pieces of the ship have a personality it's like talking oh yeah loki's Mm. gonna go look for the second piece which is harder to find but let's see what my third piece is doing now the third piece was found by some like weird guy that looks like he has herpes on his lip and okay. he's very like creepy that's why it's a pull okay i wasn't so, expecting it to be a pull i didn't mean to spoil that much but i did and now you're gonna have to pick up number three because you know the general synopsis of both one and two all right third book is danny Kett, ghost rider by howard mackey art by daniel uh, pasciuto i picked up one and two same thing caught my attention i was like yeah screw it we get a chance The first one had me because they introduced this guy called the broker that was giving his powers to some like random guy and he was going off on Danny Ketch. It was a cool fight. First book was Danny and Johnny Blaze, but Johnny Blaze is just like an older mentor guy with a bike and a shotgun. And, you know, it's kind of cool. The two of them fighting. And then the second one kind of did the same thing. And then I just didn't care anymore. Oh. And it's a pass. Yeah, yeah, it's a pass. It lost me on the second one. A Ghost Rider fan might enjoy it. So if you're familiar to how his stories are written, this might be just in line with what his stories are like. And I just might not be a fan. 
There's a lot of people out there that are fans of Spider-Man 2099. His storyline was very boring for me. I think it's whatever you enjoy, but it will be a pass for me. Okay. I think that's a good disclaimer. Well, I have one final question before we wrap this up. In the DCU, who would you put Tom Cruise as? Quick, don't think about it. Gotta be quick. Tom Cruise, DCU. I don't fucking know. Bizarro? Penelope's Podcast. Penelope's Podcast. <laughs> The original Batmobile from the animated show. I had that when I was a child. I chewed off the little things that pop out of the wheels, I remember. Okay. Remember that I had little things that pop out of the wheels? Oh, you used to chew a lot of your toys and modify them. Yeah. Like a little beaver. 